Hi guys and welcome to this week's webinar. We're very excited here in the office at Champion Bets. We're launching a brand new product, Queensland Racing, and on the line I have the Professor, our analyst from Queensland. How are you? Very well, thanks Daniel. Great to be here. Very exciting times. Mate, it's fantastic to have you on board and obviously we've uh, done our due diligence over the course of the few months and um, your in-house trial that we've run has been exceptional. Um, so what we'll do is tell us a little bit about your background, mate. Yeah, sure. So um, I've actually spent a lot of time in uh, the university system. So I did my undergraduate degree and then actually um, did a PhD and I worked in the university system doing research for about 10 years. And um, during that time, since, I guess since my university days really, I've been um, interested in doing the form and, and taking it seriously for probably about the last 10 to 12 years. Um, and I guess it got to a point where I was actually spending more time uh, worrying about doing the form than perhaps what I should have been doing at work. And, that's uh, unusual. Bit... That's unusual, a university <laughs> student that loves a punt. Yeah, isn't, isn't that strange? <laughs> so almost, almost like I spent too much time at the pub. But, um, yeah, so I guess I guess I got the bug during those years, and and I've just kind of since then always been, um, you know, fascinated, consumed with you know trying to find winners and, and get the right prices and, and work out um, you know how the big boys do it. So uh, yeah, in the last couple of years I've I've been working full time in the industry and and um, looking specifically at Queensland form. Fantastic. Can you tell us why Queensland? It's a, a question that I've been getting over the last uh, couple of days. Is there, um, is that where you, you feel that there's a niche market? You've got an edge there, or? Yeah, I think one of the things that's great about Queensland is there's so many opportunities. There's, you know, you get six or seven meetings just in southeast Queensland, not even considering North Queensland. You get six or seven meetings um, a week to kind of find a winner. Um, it does make the workload a bit higher, having to do all the replays. But I think the other thing is there's such a variety of um, tracks as well. Um, a bit less so now that Eagle Farm's been out of action, but you know you've you've got such a uh, different variety of tracks that suit different horses that I think there's you know lots of kind of opportunities to see horses going from unsuitable conditions to suitable conditions. Um, and with min minimum bet laws in place now as well, it's it's obviously easier to get set. Yeah, it's it's interesting, and I did want to touch on that aspect. Uh, there seems to be more variables in Queensland tracks than what there does anywhere in Australia uh, for the way uh, that they map during each particular race meeting. And how do you differentiate and do the form for those different tracks? And you and you specialise in southeast Queensland, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yep. So we'll look at. Um Obviously, the Metro meetings, Doonburn, and uh, hopefully when it's back soon, Eagle Farm, um, and then obviously Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast, Ipswich, Toowoomba, um, and then your country tracks, Dolby, uh, Kilcoy, Boy Desert, Gatton, all those types of places. Um, so yeah, it's, look, the, the way the tracks play is, is a big factor, and that's probably one of the edges that we have. Um, or obviously, when I'm when I review a meeting, the, um, one of the main things I'm doing is looking at how the track played, which horses were advantaged uh, or disadvantaged. Um, and so you build up kind of a profile of a track and how it generally plays, but then there are obviously conditions that can make a track play a different way to what it normally does. So it is, it is a tricky kind of situation. I think uh, hopefully we've got a pretty good grasp of it. I think, I think it is one of the reasons that, that, um, that this stuff is successful at the moment. Now you've got an example of a of a race. Um, I, I know all the guys are very keen to learn about your strategies and, and, and how you do form for a race. So you've got one there that you can run us through. Yeah, sure. So this is a race um, from a couple of weeks back at the Sunshine Coast. Uh, so the way I guess I approach doing the form is I do have a, look at a background in um, science and maths. So I, I have a lot of uh, ratings and stats that, that I use to um, generate uh, kind of what I guess I'd call it a baseline price or a ratings price um, that doesn't take any kind of much time to do. And then once I start looking at a meeting, I'm looking at 
um, I guess when I look at a race, I'm looking at doing the speed map uh, and I'm looking for things that I know uh, aren't necessarily going to be included in that based on price, things like how the track is going to play today, is the horse advantage by the, the map, um, you know, did it sit three wide, no cover on the hot pace last start, um, was it a disadvantage by the track vice last start, so basically what I'm doing is going through it and working out the speed map, working out which horses are going to be advantaged and disadvantaged and kind of tweaking those, those baseline ratings. Um, so this was this was a race where we had an odds on favourite um, order again, um, and this is the basic setup that you'll see in the in the um, the full set for a Saturday Metro meeting. Is you'll have my assessed uh, price, the price that was available uh, at the time the sheets were sent out, um, whether it's you know overlay or underlay the edge that we're getting and the recommended bet. Um, here you see, I just have an overview of the race, which is mainly to do with how I think it's, it's going to play out in terms of uh, speed here. So in this case, the uh, odds on favourite here, order again, is a kind of get back and run on top horse. Um, and this race, there really wasn't much in terms of pace. Uh, Glitter likes to go forward um, and Villadero as well, but apart from that, it wasn't going to be a breakneck speed. Um, and then we'll get to the specific comments about the runner, why of the system, the price they are. Um, so in this case order again, I thought it was flooded last start. He got back, they went fast out front um, and he ran on and hit the line strongly. Um, <coughs> and you can see there, I've also made a note that I thought that the track was going to play to the on-page runners and be and those that could find the fence. And then the two runners that I was interested in, uh, Prioritise and Bergerac were both horses that I thought could be right up on the pace, likely find the fence. Um, who had both come out of uh, runs where um, they had to overcome some kind of disadvantage. So Prioritise, the run before this was trapped three wide, no cover. Um, they went really fast out front um, and he actually still managed to kind of hold off the sweepers and hang on for a win. Um, and luckily enough, he was he was able to get the chocolates for us this time. And he's actually gone on. He's he's won another race on Saturday, and he went really well again. So um, <clears throat> that kind of first run before this kind of really signalled that he was about to uh, to really show some good good form. And it mapped the way that you saw it. Sorry for those of us that didn't see the race. Oh uh, yeah, prototypes kind of sat just behind the leaders. Actually, um, kind of over a bit and and had to kind of go up and sit outside the lead. Uh, Bergerac uh, did not actually. <laughs> that one didn't quite work out. He ended up yeah, he ended up getting it back and being um, kind of alongside order again in the run, but we got one out too, right? And we, we managed to get a little profit off the race. So. Fantastic. Do you have more of a tendency to play the on-pace runners? Yeah, I do. Um, it's certainly, in general, an advantage to be on the pace, all, all other things kind of being equal. Um, obviously, though, I do spend a lot of time on the map of the race, and if I think that there's going to be really fast speed out front, then I'm not um, afraid to back something that's going to get back and run on. Um, yeah, I think it's all about, I guess, context, you know. Um, but I'd say, in general, if you ask me what kind of horse would I prefer to back, it definitely be um, something that can, can be close to the speed for sure. And you're betting four days a week? Yes, yeah, so generally, sometimes five to be honest. So we'll, we'll definitely um, look at the midweek metros on Wednesdays. Uh, occasionally we'll get um, a country meeting on, on Thursdays at Kilcoy or Gatton or one of those places. Um, every now and then. So if, if that's the case, we'll also assess that meeting. Um, usually there's a Friday meeting at either Ipswich or Toowoomba or Sunshine Coast. Uh, I think night meetings are actually starting in a couple of weeks too. So it'll be a Friday night meeting every now and then at Sunshine Coast. Uh, and then obviously Saturday, we, we get the full set for the, um, for the Metro meeting, wherever that is. And that obviously includes um, 
this type of thing for every race. All my assessed prices, um, comments for the key runners and, and overview of the race. And I'll also um, look at the provincial meetings on that day as well. So usually we'll have a Gold Coast um, and Toowoomba provincial meeting on a Saturday. And then we back up Sunday into the uh, usually the Sunshine Coast or occasionally Toowoomba. So there's yeah, plenty, plenty of action. And they'll be released, <clears throat> tips will be released at 9am uh, with a further update around 10, 10.30, is that correct? Yeah, so for the Metro meeting on Saturdays, um, the the recommended bets will go out uh, around 9 o'clock um, and the bets for the provincial meetings will go out around 9 o'clock as well. And then I'll, uh, throughout the morning, update the full set just to make sure, you know, get take all the scratchings out and update the prices. Uh, and that usually goes out around sometime between 10 and 11. Mate, as mentioned, we're very, very excited. I know a lot of our clients are very excited to have you on board. We've got one, three and 12 month subscriptions available. Apologies to those listening in for the audio. It is a little bit scratchy, but if you have any questions, please get in touch on 1300 500 057 or email us at team at championbets.com.au. Um, as mentioned, your in-house trial was exceptional. The second new analyst that we've had this year and we're uh, extremely excited to have you on board. Thank you very much for your time today, Professor. No worries, Daniel. Thanks for having me, mate. Not a problem. All right. And uh, again, anyone, if you need any information, please get in touch. Thanks again.